Good morning, this is a detailed update on Hurricane Ian. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center for the best latest information for where you're at. So taking a look at the latest visible satellite imagery on Ian, and we can see there has been some structure changes since last night that has led to the system to not further intensify, quite surprisingly, despite the very deep convection that the system is currently generating. So on the imagery, we can see a pretty intense CDO region with overshooting tops, some lightning strikes, a lot of electrical activity in the storm with a pretty good healthy um, feeder band that is rotating pretty much almost halfway around the system with a pretty good outflow symmetry to the system as we can see with all these cirrus clouds kind of evacuating um, outflow in almost all quadrants of the system very well evident here this morning and this is what's allowing the system to get better organized but however it is not further intensifying as we can see on the latest recon mission in just a second looking at the ir satellite imagery clearly these cloud tops are about negative 70 to negative 80 degrees um cooler uh, than they were yesterday so we're talking about some very explosive deep convection over the system currently ongoing as of right now so comparing our last two hurricane missions one from last night when we did a live stream on this and we can see that the pressure in their last pass has dropped down to 985 millibars so a four to five millibar drop in air pressure with hurricane force winds in their last two legs through the system also some hurricane force winds here at the time near say the cayman islands but let taking a look at our latest recon mission right now the pressure has not dropped any further more than likely because of the eye wall that is remaining somewhat open on the western side of the system and this is probably a common occurrence when a system is trying to rapidly intensify it's not able to um, kind of rapids deep convection on the western side of the system likely due to a little bit of westerly shear that is not being detected really well still at this time nevertheless the latest recon flight right now is finding hurricane force winds just barely on the their two passes through the eastern and northeastern southeastern eye wall at this time and it remains to be seen with what the central pressure is going to be when the plane makes its second pass through the center of Ian in just a little bit and we'll provide you an update as soon as they made their second pass okay but as of right now as it stands from the latest national hurricane center as of the eight o'clock eastern daylight time advisory this is going to be a very powerful life-threatening potentially catastrophic hurricane approaching the western tip of cuba with hurricane warnings out for that area so i hope you all have your um preparedness plans fully in place and you're already ready to go when tropical storm force winds arrive into your area the system and uh, ian is expected to rapidly intensify further into a category 4 hurricane as it approaches the eastern half of the gulf of mexico as you all can see here between tuesday morning and wednesday after no wait, tuesday afternoon and wednesday afternoon the system is expected to be absolutely powerful possibly life-threatening and catastrophic on the approach to the west coast of florida where hurricane watches and tropical storm watches are currently issued for saint pete also for um if you are in say um, tampa florida if you are in cape coral even if you are in the key west florida area this is a very serious situation strong winds very intense heavy rainfall flooding storm surge that could be catastrophic um, this needs to be taken pretty seriously if you are right on the coast of Florida. Weakening is expected by f Friday morning thereafter. Winds of right now are at 75 miles an hour. It is moving to the northwest at 14. So no further intensification has not occurred since our last live stream last night. The rainfall forecast, according to the National Hurricane Center, is pretty substantial here. We're talking about 6 to even 10 inches of rainfall almost a foot here in tampa bay florida orlando florida 
Miami, Key West, even um, the right along the coast here, even St. Pete here could have rainfall totals even getting close to 10 to 15 inches. So we're talking about really intense rainfall that will lead to freshwater flooding. We also have the threat again for storm surge, which we'll show you here in the products in just a second. All right, so most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds is goes as follows. There's a 100% chance of the arrival and most likely reasonable time of tropical storm force winds on Cuba by tonight. So 8 p.m., maybe even 2 a.m. Tuesday, we're talking about tropical storm force winds. This is the last moments you're able to even get anything prepared. As soon as tropical storm force winds arrive onto your area, you cannot do anything. It's too dangerous to do any more further preparation. So make sure you heed my warning, you heed my advice, and you get any preparations done as quick as possible today before tropical storm force winds arrive tonight into, say, early Tuesday morning. Tropical storm force winds are going to likely arrive on the eastern and western coast of Florida as early as Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, even into Thursday morning with a 80 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds. Hurricane force winds have also gone up. We can see that there is a greater than 70 to 80% chance of hurricane force winds. Some of these winds could be majorly strong as we just showed you major hurricane conditions possible on western Cuba and then a 40 to 50 percent chance of hurricane force winds right on the western tip of the coast of Florida here including the Big Bend. When we take a look here at our key messages there's a lot to read but all I'm going to say right now folks I'm, I'm taking this very seriously now. So Hurricane Ian is expected to bring life-threatening catastrophic impacts such as flash flooding, mudslides to Cuba over the higher terrain in particular. We're talking about also um, catastrophic storm surge, hurricane force winds, and very heavy rainfall which could lead to substantial flood impacts over Florida. Okay, so this is a very big deal by all standards if you're in the Tampa area and that's why you all need to listen to your National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, or even myself, as I am providing the best information possible for you all, and that way you're able to get prepared instead of just not doing anything today. Today is a big day. Get any windows boarded up to get anything prepared just in case if this gets even closer. Storm surge has also been going up as of the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. This is from the 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time Advisory 13. We can see that storm surge um, is going to be pretty high in Tampa Bay, 5 to 8 feet. Charlotte Beach there at 4 to 7 feet. Bonita Beach, 4 to 7 feet. Eaglewood, 4 to 7 feet. Also down here to the south, Key West, 3 to 5 feet. Um, possibly two to four feet in some areas. Card Sound Bridge, right around two to four feet. All right, so this is uh, above your head. This um, is the type of storm surge that can lead to a lot of drownings and stuff, a lot of problems. Um, so again, the golf can see you instead of you having to go see the golf, in another words, because the storm surge is going to make its way not pretty far inland in some sense, depending on where exactly you're at. Okay, so storm surge, a big deal with Hurricane um, Ian. So taking a look here now at the latest flood threat uh, from the WPC in accordance to the National Hurricane Center, there is now a moderate risk for flash flooding that is issued. And just to let you all know, there is also a slight risk for severe weather in this area, including the threat for tornadoes, some of which could be strong. And we could also see some hail and some damaging wind gusts along to go with some of the rain bands that roll through. So we're just talking about a lot of significant impacts, anything from storm surge, hurricane impacts to severe weather impacts and flood um, impacts as well. So this needs to be taken quite seriously, folks, right now. Tallahassee, um, you're looking at marginal risk and Jacksonville, a slight risk for flash flooding. All right. 
That's why I'm going through all these products because uh, this is a big deal. So right now, St. Petersburg, Tampa, um, as well as Clearwater, there is a storm surge watch that is currently issued. Let me make sure I got this right if they did any more updates. Okay, no, there's still a storm surge watch as of right now. Cape Coral, um, uh, Port Charlotte, Naples, all the way down to Key West. We There is now a storm surge watch that is in effect. This can get to a warning as the time gets closer. And if it gets to a warning, you need to already be ready to evacuate just in case if the Gulf comes and sees you instead of you seeing the Gulf. All right, so as of right now, the latest National Hurricane Center intensity forecast, this is as of the 5 o'clock advisory um, this morning, and we can see that the intensity forecast has been risen from the last one, and now we're back up to 140 miles an hour in the next two days. Now, the new advisory is coming out here in about two hours, and it might either be a little lower than this, or a little higher than this, but it won't matter on the exact intensity because Ian is expected to be a very powerful, catastrophic uh, major hurricane on the approach to Florida in the next couple of days. Do not focus exactly on how strong um, Ian gets because a major hurricane, a category three, a category two is just as bad as a category four in some sense. Every hurricane presents its own problems and this one is no exception. So taking a look here at the latest GFS model run, and we can see that the system does not look to be as strong when it makes landfall over Western Cuba, which might be a, a demise because of what we're seeing on the recon aircraft this morning. Still a lot stronger than what the GFS model is indicating. So take this with a grain of salt because by the time it gets into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico near Florida, air pressure is gonna be 950 millibars. That's still a major hurricane on the GFS model. And it's gonna stall here potentially. This is now a, an increasing likelihood scenario. The European model indicates it. The Canadian is slowly beginning to indicate it. So most of these global models are showing that the system could really slow down substantially, if not stall out uh, right along the coast of Florida. And if this is uh, gonna happen, this would be a really, really devastating scenario. I mean, we would be talking about a lot of catastrophic impacts if this actually ends up happening. By day five, it makes landfall over the Big Bend of Florida. By Friday evening now, we're talking Friday evening, and I just went through a couple of days here. So like when we go from Wednesday morning, so there's Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, it has just barely moved, folks. This is not good at all. When we go all the way into Thursday morning, or Friday morning, I should say. So in just a couple of days, the system has only moved probably about 50, 75, maybe 100 miles. That is really slow in a two-day period, okay? And so that's going to lead to enhanced, if not moderate, to high risk for flash flood potential and storm surge inundation likely potential. So when we look at the European model, it is also a little stronger. Let's go to, okay, wait, the 06Z is out? Yes, it is. 975, 967 millibars. So actually the European model is stronger than the GFS in itself. So imagining what this is gonna look like. So as it gets closer to Florida, it gets down to 949 millibars, but now the European model has this really crawling, I mean, just like the GFS, really, really moving slow. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna try to stutter here. I don't mean to stutter, but I'm just speechless because this is really going to be crawling up the coast according to the latest two global models that we have. Even the hurricane models do indicate it. So the H wharf has this at 954, so still substantial intensification is anticipated throughout the day today on the hurricane models. And then of course, um, it's gonna intensify it even further. Look at the H wharf, 937 with 140 mile an hour winds potentially on this. Again, this is up in the ballpark of a mid to high end category four intensity on this um, H wharf model. And then the winds do come down, but it's gonna parallel with the coast of Florida. We just don't know exactly how close this is gonna get. 
We're talking about a stalling hurricane potentially, folks, right along the coast of Florida, not far offshore. If this moves further east and it stalls uh, much closer to the coast, I would promise you it's going to be a lot worse, okay? And then moving on shore, weakening, thank goodness, to 994. But again, that's probably a little bit of an understatement given on our global models of what we've been viewing. The HMON model is a little more aggressive still at 947 millibars, but a lot further to the east than in prior runs. So when it ejects off Cuba at 946 millibars by Tuesday morning, we can see 100 and maybe 25 to 130 mile an hour winds perhaps. Winds do increase still up to about category four intensity. So still in the ballpark of a category four here, potentially a high in category four with 150 mile an hour winds in particular on this HMON model. That is very substantial. And this would hit um, Tampa Bay as a major possible Category 4 hurricane. That's what the HMON shows here. And this would be really, really a big deal because you would get a lot of your heavy rain, strong winds, as you all can see here. That would bring substantial impacts. And low-level winds, by the way, would be that of major hurricane intensity. I mean, this is a big deal. Please take this seriously, folks. I've said it too many times in this video. Alrighty, we got some new recon data into our studio, and we can see that air pressure is down to about 980 millibars now. So there has been another drop of about 2 to 4 millibars just within that last pass, which is about an hour ago. Still very strong hurricane force winds though, but looks like the contingency with the wind field is a little bit more broader. It's not suddenly wind increase like we saw last night. We'll see how this transpires throughout the next several passes that the recon will be doing this morning to better assess exactly if indeed if Ian has rapidly intensified any further. As it stands now, the pressure is showing that at 980 millibars. One last thing that I did want to show you all is how strong will Ian get as of the 12 o'clock um, UTC model runs. Well, we have a better idea that the system will rapidly intensify first or will continue to do so right now, but my intensity forecast Fortunately, has not changed from the previous one, and I still think this is going to struggle a little bit more. So my intensity forecast as of right now has only, has only been nudged up another 5 miles an hour. So I'm only forecasting this now to become a Category 3 with 120 mile an hour winds, as you can see here. But weakening is anticipated thereafter. So I'm in the black line that I have here. And I am still below all of the model guidance of the exceptions of the, um, the NVGI model, which is lower than mine. But it wouldn't matter right now because this is going to be a major hurricane more than likely in the next 12 to 18 hours or so. I truly believe that the track forecast has not changed much from last night and shows a very close call here for a major hurricane very close to Tampa, Florida, as well as a big bend of Florida in the next two to three days. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.